Hey everybody, Rodman here. Thanks for tuning in to episode 2 of the Kerbal Space Program. So, I wanted to go over some tips. First off, uh, Matthew mentioned that declining contracts does have a reputation loss, so I'll stop doing it willy-nilly. And I did, however, forget to do some crew reports, so I apologize for that, especially in high orbit. Uh, let's get going. The first thing I want to do is to... Let's do an orbit mission. Why not? So the issue, the limitations, as to say, with the orbit mission is that I have a max parts 30. I could upgrade my VAB, but I kind of want max parts 30. I like that as a restriction to orbit. Um, that seems fine to me. Uh, before I do the orbiting, I am going to go into my administration building. And I'm going to trade uh, funds for science at a commitment of 25%. This means that for every uh, 1,200 funds that I get, I yield some science. There's no refunds. It costs me a lot of money. But I'm going to do that because science is the first big bottleneck of Kerbal Space Program, and that will help yield some extra science. If I ever need extra funds, I can always do a ferry mission or two. Uh, all right, so we have left off with RHD Taurus or RHD4. So let's go ahead and build a new craft. I'm going to use some of the tips I received in its design. So first thing I will put, this is an orbiter, I will put a little um, parachute on the top. I'm gonna put some goo containers here so that I can obtain some science while I'm up there. And thermometers and barometers. Now in space, uh, I probably already have all the science that I need because I have done suborbital trajectories, but I haven't formally um, orbited yet. So that is the big next goal. Uh, then at the bottom of my teeny little ship, we'll go ahead and slap a heat shield here. And that will help with aerodynamics. Now I know the, um, you know, even speaking of aerodynamics, let's go ahead and put these in a service bay so they don't cause drag and they don't blow up. Why not, right? We can afford a service bay. They're not that expensive. And it will make the ship le look a little less goofy. Okay, so this is the part that is coming back down to Kerbin. Uh, then, next up, put a decoupler so that we can then have a fuel tank and I guess I should keep an eye on my parts count in here I want a swivel engine and let's go with three radially mounted uh, hammer rockets all right and then below my swivel I'm going to have thumpers and I will have uh, three thumpers or four thumpers rather all right that's looking good my total Delta V is pretty high that is the sort of the maximum amount of acceleration or whatever I'm not explaining very well but I don't really need to this is an experimental space program. I'm at 29 parts. I have um, strutted these things together so that they don't uh, shake apart. 29 out of 30 parts. I think this will get me to orbit. Uh, what I'm gonna do next is to limit the thrust that these things produce down to 45%. Ideally, your thrust to weight ratio um, for your ship when you're taking off should be uh, somewhere between 1.2 to 2 thrust to weight ratio. The previous Taurus bus I had going were dreadfully inefficient because they had really high thrust to weight ratios that were unnecessary. If you're curious what it is, you just go to the Delta V tools, show all. And my thrust to weight ratio is a little too low at 0.96. That means that if I fired up the engines right now, I wouldn't actually move anywhere because I don't produce enough thrust to move the ship. 
Um, and then my next stage has a thrust to weight ratio of 1.7. Uh, that's fine. So let's revert the flight and fix my not thrusting enough uh, engines here. We'll get these up to 55. All right, save. I'm going to move this engine down here. I'll explain why once I take off. All right, so I think this thing has a good chance to orbit. And here it is in all of its 29 part glory. It does weigh over the 18 tons that we were initially limited on the runway or on the launch pad. So you would have to upgrade your launch pad, but you wouldn't have to upgrade your VAB for this thing. It is inexpensive. Let's check Delta V once more. We are at 1.17. That's almost 1.12 or almost 1.2, which is what I said I would think the minimum is. I'm going to turn on SES and launch. Now, because our thrust to weight ratio is really low, uh, we're taking off very slowly. Now, for a point of reference, the uh, Saturn first phase had a thrust weight ratio of about 1.15. So this has about the same ratio. Uh, some Russian Russian crafts, Russian uh, rockets had like a, a ratio of like 1.6 or so just to put that in real life perspective. Now I'm going to throttle up to about here. And the reason is this phase here, I'm gonna to have to start tilting towards 90 so that I can orbit. But uh, I'm relying on the gimbaling of the swivel here in order to help steer, which is why I moved my liquid fuel stage down a little bit. It's going to help me uh, control the ship a bit better. So we'll get that going. So the first phase of this ship basically is to bring this out of the dense atmosphere. And as you can see, it's kind of tilting on its own. Now this phase, as you can see, I am able to steer it a lot better and I'm gonna steer it towards 90 degrees as you can see, I'm wobbling a lot, but I'm getting there. And then once it's a little bit more stable, I can cut the liquid engines. So basically what's happening is the gimbal, which is the ability to angle the engines here. Uh, here, if I see it, how it waddles. Whoa, I shouldn't waddle it while I'm launching. Um, that allows me to steer a little bit. Let me get back on course. And angling to 90 is because that's sort of how to orbit. Um, if you think about, uh, so what is my Apple apps? Uh, so we are definitely exiting the atmosphere here. Let me get rid of these side rockets. They've served their purpose. So the way to orbit is once you have an Apo of above 70,000 meters or 70 kilometers, uh, you're going to want to sort of circularize is the term, circularize your orbit. I don't know if I'm going to have enough fuel to do it because I steer, steered my ship a little bit. Uh, also, it is most engines are way more efficient in vacuum than they are in atmosphere. So I'm gonna wait until I am actually properly in space to then try to circularize. Uh, the exceptions of course are engines that require air intake, but that's mostly for flight and not for space flight. Uh, there is of course flight in this game. So now that we are in space, I am going to uh, burn my fuel towards 90 degrees to try to get this orbit going. I don't know if I have enough fuel or delta V as it is, uh, but we'll see. I can always trial and error it. Now, the reason I keep cutting my engines is your efforts to circularize are a lot more effective the closer you are to your uh, peak, your apoapse or apoapsis. So as you can see, I am speeding up to, oh, speed up time a little bit too much there and I'm constantly burning right at the peak, and I've orbited. I am 
officially in orbit. And the reason I know is A, I just completed a bunch of contracts, but B, my APO and my periaps is above 70,000. If it was below, I would drag into the atmosphere and eventually deorbit. But um, this isn't this is somewhat of an eccentric orbit, orbit, meaning that one side I'm further out than the other, but it's an orbit nonetheless. Uh, so given that I'm in an orbit, let's go for a spacewalk. EVA, our pilot, he's going to grab some science and board. Now let's try a crew report. Crew report won't yield science because I already have crew reports from space. Um, most of these science collection objects aren't going to yield much either because I've already been up here. And just because I'm orbiting doesn't make it all that special. Uh, so the next trick I'm going to do is try to come down on KSC as close as I can so that I can be refunded uh, as high as a percentage as I can. Now, of course, the only thing that's being refunded here is everything above my heat shield. So it's not a lot that's getting refunded, but I'm still going to attempt to do it anyway. And I'm going to do it sort of eyeballing it. Yes, there are a lot of mods that will aid me in this task, but uh, I don't mind eyeballing it. So right around here... Yep, this is good enough. Let's eyeball it. I'm going to um, face towards or away from my... Um, away from my orbit so that I'm going to be blasting off in the opposite direction and firing up my engines. I barely have any fuel. My fuel is up here. I am very, very, very low on fuel, but fire up my engines a little bit. And then what will happen is I will enter the atmosphere and cause drag. Now I do want to uh, face the North Pole a little bit more. I want to, I want to get a little bit closer to KSC. So I'm going to point my ship north. Because as you can see, the line doesn't actually go over KSC. It's a little bit south. So I want to move this north. So I'll point north and use the very last of my fuel to try to align myself to actually hit KSC. Uh, I don't have a mod like MechJeb or you know Engineering Redux or something like that to tell me what my aero braking is. Uh, they will actually calculate how the atmosphere will slow you down. And like I said, I don't have that installed. This is just my best guesstimate. Now I also want to make sure that uh, now that I'm in high orbit, uh, let's do a crew report. And we are doing one from upper atmosphere, so it yields a bunch of stuff. And let's do, before we speed up time and start to burn up in the atmosphere, we will grab whatever science there is from this uh, elevation. Because science is king. All right, speeding up time again for my teeny little orbiter. We also brought um, 10 monoprop propellant, which was totally worthless with us. So currently, as you can see, uh, let me slow down time. It looks like I'm overshooting KSC a lot. But as I am slowing down in the atmosphere, uh, I will get closer and closer and closer. And hopefully I won't overshoot it by too much. It does look like I'm coming pretty close. Better than just picking a random spot on a globe, that's for sure. I'm literally able to see my facilities. So, although I am overshooting it a tad, just a smidgen, it's, it's still pretty good. We're, we're right over. That's probably giving everyone at the uh, Space Center a nice uh, a nice view. They saw me burn up. And as soon as... Oh, there we go. It's going to say as soon as I can pop my parachute, the better. Because then that will cause some drag to stop my horizontal velocity so I come straight down. And this is actually... If you were a space program, uh, this is exactly how you would want to land. Uh, water landing is obviously a lot safer than uh, landing on the land because it's a softer splash. And we are just, just off the coast of KSC coming in for our victory lap, having orbited the planet a full, a full time.
And it only took uh, 40 minutes. <laughs> now before I trot back to KSC, I can also do a EVA report from the waters because I'm not near the shores anymore. And I don't believe I have soil collection or anything like that yet. So let's get back into the pod. If we can't, oh no, we can. Let's see if we can't grab our way back. There we go. Board back into the pod. The EVA report is now stored in the command pod and recover the vessel. Let's see how we did. We got uh, 10 kilometers away for a 97% return on the parts that we brought back. We obtained 55 science, which is great. Uh, we really needed more than 90 and we got that. So that's perfect. And we gained some reputation. So our total reputation is 144. All right, feels pretty good about that. So this, now that I have more science, I'm going to unlock basic science because that gives us science junior, which helps produce more science. And then I'm also going to unlock advanced rocketry because the Terrier liquid fuel engines are very efficient in vacuum. They are not very powerful. They sip uh, fuel, but they're very fuel efficient. And the way to see that, if you uh, right click on them, it's your engine ISP in vac. So on the planet, I only have an efficiency rating. Let's for simplification, let's just call this uh, a rating, 85 to 345. That's like fuel to thrust efficiency or miles per gallon. Uh, if we check the other rockets we've had, this one has a 310. This one has a 320. So as you could see, a 345 is significantly better. Now the thrust it produces, is only um, 60 kilonewtons. So it's very weak compared to uh, 240 kilonewtons. There's also weight involved. So this engine weighs half a ton, whereas this engine weighs 1.25 tons. So if you look at the, this engine, for instance, this weighs 1.5 tons and produces about 200 kilonewtons. So bang for your buck, the Terrier engine is kind of an improvement over all of these other ones. Uh, the only issue is it doesn't produce energy. So these two starter rockets that we have produce power. Um, the Terrier rockets don't. They don't have an alternator that produces power. So that's, that's the only issue I would have to say with the Terrier rockets. Um, and then the other things we unlocked in this are some fuel tank adapters, a larger fuel tank, a... Um, radially mounted engine um, and then in the basic science we have the science junior which is a little pod that has a bunch of science stuff on it um, and we can use that to generate science for us uh, the experiment storage unit which helps to store your experiments I don't tend to use them often I probably should but I don't a command a, 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 a pod which allows us to have unmanned space flight some uh, battery packs, uh, an, an antenna, and some radiators to dissipate heat if we are producing heat. Um, so if, for instance, you didn't want a heat shield, you could slap on some radiators and they would passively dissipate heat for up to four times of the temperature of the part uh, that it is attached to. And all, all parts have their own um, temperature limits. So some things like... Uh, the command pod here has a, the skin of the command pod has a temperature limit of 2200 Kelvin. Um, some things that are more sensitive, like a barometer, is 1200 Kelvin, or the thermometer, which is 1200 Kelvin. Uh, other things are less sensitive, like um, the parachutes, which are 2500 Kelvin. So it all depends. And then heat shields, again, have ablator effects so they will use up its quote-unquote ablation fuel to um, dissipate heat that way okay so that's enough of that let's go into our missions so we want maybe a little bit more science wouldn't hurt so let's take a look 
the way so so the the uh, strategy that I have employed here will allow us to get one extra science for the parachute flight for both of these parachute flights so let's do uh, two parachute tests in one flight why not I like that challenge I didn't really read these over all that well so I hope that they don't have weird complications I'm just going to name weird test flights RHD test. So we're going to have a command pod. Um, let's see what these are. Get rid of all these messages I received. Oh man, so many messages. So one is to test the radially, radially mounted drogue chute at high-ish altitude at speed. And the other is the other parachute at lower altitude at less speed. Okay. I understand that. So let's slap two drogue shoots and one MK16 shoot. Put them on different staging. The drogue shoots are going to go first and then the MK shoot. Um, let's see. Slap some fuel tanks here and our uh, gimbling or vectoring uh, engine so that we have some control. Okay, put it all on its own separate stage, and this is all I need for this test. Pretty cheap little rocket, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to get to the altitude and speed for the drogue shoots, and then cut our engines, and then get to the altitude and speed for the uh, MK-16, if I can. Hopefully I'm able to do it properly. So I'm going to do a thrust. We're going to get to 290 meters per second. And here's our speedometer at a altitude of 9,000 meters. Here's our altimeter. We'll do the altimeter over, I don't know, water is fine. So now we're almost at the 290. So I'm using control to cut my engines a little bit. So I don't want to whiz past my speed because it's within 290 to 390. So I'm already at 290. So I'm going to cut the engines to barely, barely accelerate me, as you can see here. I'm trying to stay just above 290. There's really no point to go that much higher than 290. Uh, we are at the requirements for the first test. So I hit spacebar, which triggers the stage. And contract complete. I make money. I make science. Everyone happy. And the next one is at uh, 7,000 to 10,000 meters moving at a certain speed. So I'm going to speed up time and wait until I'm within the elevation, which I am now. And then I'm going to make sure to get within the speed. And that can be speed going either direction. And I was within the speed. So it could be speed going up or speed going down. It doesn't really care. It just cares about the speed, the deployment speed. And that contract is complete. Uh, all right, let's accelerate time down to the planet. Our drogue shoots deploy, add drag, slow us down. Our main shoot deploys. We aren't going at nine meters per second. So what I'm gonna have to do, let's uh, set it to elevation over land. Uh, when I'm about to land, I'm gonna have to fire up my engines to slow my descent or the rocket on the bottom of my ship will explode on impact. So as you can see, I am feathering it. Ideally uh, below nine, but there we go. Nice and feathered. And here we are. Uh, crew report from the launch pad. Sure, why not? An EVA report on the launch pad. Uh, I guess we've already done that. Let's board and recover. Both of those contracts completed at the same time. If you can do contracts like a two for one, uh, that will save you a lot of money. You know, obviously, because it's fewer launches. Now, fortunately, I recovered about 3.2 grand from parts. Uh, the whole cost of that test launch was, uh, let's go see. I don't think it was that expensive. I 
landed basically on the runway and didn't use a lot of fuel. Yeah, I used 300 funds to run a test that made me uh, maybe 50 times that. Not bad, I'd have to say. Not bad. All right. Let's take a look at what else we can do. Other mission controls. So, the other, the next big milestone is explore the MUN. And I'm probably not quite ready to do that. Uh, but let's see, what kind of science are we looking for in order to do that? We don't need aviation, because we're not flying to the MUN. We have to... Um, ooh, there is so much that would be ideal to get. Now, the next big science... Acquisition tech. Uh, let's see about that. Uh, we acquire more science items up here, maybe. That's pretty late. So, flight control wouldn't be terrible to get to the MUN. Fuel systems would be really, really nice. Uh, especially the external fuel duct. That is a very powerful tool to make. Very... Um, fuel efficient rockets uh, if you're curious about what I'm referring to it's called asparagus staging um, it's not realistic to the point where we would do it in real life uh, but it is very fuel efficient for KS uh, Kerbal Space Program alright so let's just say I want to upgrade some objects upgrade my tracking station maybe Definitely upgrade my VAB. We're going to need some money for this. So let's look at the money. Uh, this is a suborbital contract, so that's pretty easy to do. These are orbital contracts, so that's a little bit more difficult. These are all suborbital too. All right, let's take um, two contracts of suborbital, suborbital uh, and go into the VAB. Oh, actually, you know what? Why don't we uh, upgrade the VAB? Now we just took these contracts. We'll be making money soon. And this allows us to have a larger part count. All right. Um, let's go ahead and set up for this space tourist mission. We're going to need three of these command pods for all of the tourists we have. And then additionally, uh, let's add some more parachutes and while I'm up there I'll do two science juniors just to tack it on because I'm adding the science juniors because we haven't gotten the l upper you know actually how much do these weigh oh, they're not that heavy um I'm going to add them like that. I know, looks absolutely redonkulous. Um, but there's a very good reason I'm adding them like this. So we'll make some things a little bit easier. All right. I'm. This is definitely going to be a spaceship almost out of... Um, I don't know. It, it will look laughable, but that's that's okay. So, we're only doing a suborbital contract here. So, actually, let's go ahead and add a decoupler. And a bunch of fuel. Maybe we'll do four of these down here. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably have to work this. Because that looks too too silly. I'm tempted to do it. I'd like to put all of my... Um, put all my eggs in one big do-it-all-at-once basket. Alright. Is this enough parachutes? I don't know. We'll add one more. We'll have uh, three drogues and three regulars. All right. So the drogues first, then the regulars. Uh, just in case uh, things heat up, because we'll be coming down quick. 
I'm going to slap some radiators on my um, passengers and my science. We'll add some battery packs uh, way up towards the top of the ship so they don't get cooked. Because maybe the heat shield will protect them. Uh, checking my... We only have to do suborbitals, so that should be okay. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is strut to the rockets. Oh, no, we're going to need four struts, not three. That's going to screw up someone's view. That person's view. Uh, we could fix it. There. I think I'm set. Um, tourist two. Now for crew, we'll throw in all these tourists and save. Uh, let's also change the thrust limiter to try to figure out a good thrust to weight ratio here. So I'm going to first test out 65. Save and launch. And then we'll run the, we'll crank the science. There might be a way to do thrust to weight ratios inside the VAB uh, without mods, but so far I'm gonna keep this vanilla. So this is a thrust to weight ratio a little bit too high. So I'm gonna lower it down to maybe 50 and then take off and see if we get to space. Now, as a point of reference, our ship is 33 parts, so we're three parts over the count. The uh, if we hadn't upgraded our VAB, and obviously way, way overweight, if we hadn't upgraded the launch pad. Now, obviously, I am afforded a lot more parts and weight, so if we wanted to, we could make this ship bigger and add more thrust, and definitely get to space. Um, so what I'm curious is observing the materials bay at different elevations for science. So flying at Kerbin, let's close those doors. Now the one thing I don't really have is the ability to steer this thing. It's basically just, because it's all solid boosters, it's just going straight up and then more or less straight back down. So if we review the data, this is just flying at Kerbin. Oh, we're tilting. All right, so I'm gonna add. I'm gonna need to add fins. I could just um, decouple like this, and then parachute. Uh, but I'm just gonna save cost by reverting. I'm not playing on hardcore mode where I can't revert. That's probably more challenging than I'm able to. Uh, Accomplished. So let's go ahead and add some uh, nose cones for aerodynamics and some fins for some control. Um, and call this good. See if that makes the difference. Turning SS on. Observing the first materials bay and close the doors and then we're going to Observe it in high atmosphere and then observe it in space and that should yield a bunch of science a bunch of extra science for us Ship seems a lot more stable if you're ever curious you can hit f12 to see the aerodynamic forces as you can see here there is a little bit of force on these fins there's far more force on the, uh, you know, you can see drag being caused by these radiators, drag being caused by the heat shield. So if I want, if I needed to, I could obviously move the heat shield and the radiators to cause less drag. I'm uh, using WSD to sort of steer this back to 90 as best I can. And if we look at the map here, we're almost suborbital here. I don't know if we have enough bang to get us there. We'll have to see. 
But we are in high orbit, so I'm going to observe my materials bay. And close those doors. And yep, we are very easily entering space here. So I'm going to separate from my fuel boosts. And they're just going to harmlessly bump us a little bit. That's fine. All right, and now we're in proper space. Observe the last bay. Even more science. Close those doors. All right, I have, oh, I brought some mono propellant with me, but I have a lot of electric charge. So what I'm gonna do is uh, fire up these radiators. I'm doing it sort of ahead of time. And then if we hit F11, you can see sort of the temperature overlay. So when we start to generate heat from re-entry, uh, you'll see these radiators work, hopefully. Everyone's suborbital uh, uh, contracts have been accomplished. Now I just need to land this thing. Now because we tilted a little extra, no, actually that looks okay. We're gonna get pretty close back to KSC here. Let's accelerate time. We're back in Atmo, uh, point down so the heat shield protects us. I know it's a weird place for heat shield. I really could have put it on the bottom, but whatever. We'll leave the uh, temperature overlay on, which is F11, so that you can see the heat being generated and dissipated, and even the aerodynamic forces. As you'll see, there'll be a lot of drag here in a second as we are entering thicker and thicker atmosphere the lower we get. So there's the the drag that we're producing. And the parts on our ship that are producing the drag are heating up the most as a result. I turned off all the overlays just so that you can see. And we are really low but drogues just fired off. Regulars just fired off. That was somewhat of a ballistic trajectory, aka dangerous. Um, you know, launches that go straight up and down, you don't spend a lot of time uh, sort of dragging in the atmosphere, and as a result, um, you can come in a lot hotter. I turned off all the radiators, not that it's all that necessary. And now happily descending at a very calm pace of six meters per second uh, to the ocean. Ooh, this is going to take a while. And this will be my uh, last mission for the day. As I'm up over my time, I'm aware. But yeah, a bunch of successful missions back to back to back. And this uh, mission here that I just did will help bankroll some future ones. Uh, I'll be able to upgrade uh, more buildings in my uh, space center. Now to note, if you ever smash into your buildings in the space center, you will have to rebuild them. Ooh, that was hard. Let's hit F3. Um, so, splashing down just now destroyed our heat shield. So you can see it's gone because we have a very long um, ship. But nothing else got destroyed. We're good. And uh, let's see about a crew report from the water. Sure, that's more science. And an EVA report underwater. We apparently already got that one. And recover. Drum roll, please. We got everyone back up to space and back and healthy and they're fine. Our reputation's gonna go up. So we gained 67 science out of that, which is great. We are eight science away from unlocking um, the fuel pumps that I wanted. As for parts, um, almost 95% value. And we got refunded all the monopropellant fuel that we didn't need to bring. And great. Uh, let's clear out the message log and take a look at R&D. So what I'm trying to do is earn fuel systems. I think that will help out a lot in order to get the, um, get to Mun, get to the moon. Uh, let's see about making eight real quick. I think I can do it. 
Let's see. I know this looks silly, but I think this will actually work. We haven't actually done a science report from the science junior while landed. So let's observe. That's 7.5 and let's do it twice. Sometimes you get mm, some diminishing returns. Sometimes the diminishing returns is 100%, meaning do it once and the second time you do it, it isn't worth anything. Other times that's not true. So I, I built two. Obviously the whole ship is gonna get refunded. We earned nine science. That gives us enough to get the fuel systems. All right. Well, guys, that's all I have for today. If you have any tips, tricks, feedback for me, drop me a line. Um, there's a lot of chat around my Discord channel about KSC and K uh, Kerbal Space Program uh, in general. So if you want to get in on the discussion, uh, please hop on Discord. Uh, it's just on the link that's showing up on your screen. Hop to my website and there'll be a Discord link there. I want to thank everyone that is involved in this so far, and I'll catch you all later. Thank you for tuning in, and adios.